What's going on guys? My name is Brandon. We got two videos in store in this one today. We've got a real quick repair video from last week's episode that I talked about and we've got a fabrication video we're going to be doing midway through the project. Stick around. One of the projects that I got to get done today is that this is a half to one of the target stands that we built a while back and I'll have a link to that build as well. Now in last week's video I showed you this piece and what happened was is that the strapping it actually got I can't get the strapping out because somebody shot this base. Now look how deep and dimpled that is. Now if I hold it like that you can kind of get an idea of how much damage there is to that. You can see how deep that is. So I can't get that piece of strapping out and the way these work if you watch that video that I linked, basically strapping slides into this, you attach a cardboard to it, and then you can put your target on top of that. So I think the way I'm gonna fix this is I'm actually gonna use a hole saw, and I'm actually gonna drill this section out so it removes this big dimple, then I can slide this out. So if you guys are building these target stands, this might be a good way too if you guys end up getting a little overexcited and shooting at them. So what I've got here is a hole saw that will allow me to cut the entire bad section out of there. A great thing about this mag drill is that it also will take hole saws and annular cutters. Right now, obviously, I have a chuck in it. This is a stand that I built. I paid like $75 for it, and then I ended up mounting uh, this plate. I welded this half-inch plate onto it. Then I just set my mag drill on it and use it like a drill press. All right, let's see. Here is the setup. I've got the hole saw in. You can see that one of the handles is gonna hit on the way by, so I unscrewed one of them. And as I lower it down into, I might have to just kind of unscrew one. I don't really know. I've got it clamped down in two places, right here and on the back. And I'll just keep spraying some cutting fluid every now and again to keep everything nice and cool. To turn it on, I've got a switch on the back, and then there's a switch here that actually turns on the motor. The motor will not turn on unless the magnet's on, and that's what the switch on the back does. Well, that was easy. Huh? All fixed. <laughs> Look at that. That's what the piece looked like right there. So now with my piece all set up in there, now we just gotta figure out what we got for material. And you can see that's eighth inch by my little card that I'm using, and it said it's 125 thousandths. I'm just gonna do a quick setup on my machine here. And I've gone through all these settings on this quite a few times in the past, so I'm not gonna go over them right now with you, but I will say I'm running 16 CFH of gas, and uh, that will save you some gas, and it works really good, so. All right, there's that. I'm using solid wire, and I'm using C25 gas, and the wire that I'm using is 30 thousandths Lincoln. Turn it on, and I'm already set for material thickness. The card that I showed you set 125 thousandths, so there we are. We're set on steel, 30 thousandths C25 gas. That's how fast it is to set up this welder. All right, so let me get on some PPE, and we will get this thing welded up. My only concern, since I have a fairly good sized gap there, that I don't end up pushing too much weld metal down in there because then it could interfere with the strapping sliding in there. So I'm going to try to like not force it down really deep. Alright, let me just try my strap and make sure that that's going to work. Yep. Yeah. 
There. Good enough. Here we go. Done. There, good enough. I'll hit it with some paint. We'll call it a day. This is what we're building. So this piece right here is on like a four-wheeler, and that is a standard size like car truck receiver hitch. And this right here is like a little utility car. Well, he needs something that will slide into this and be able to hook that trailer to it. So he's giving me a bunch of measurements. There's the inside of the receiver tube. So that's just going to be standard uh, two inch. So we can use a regular two inch receiver. Real shallow. You can see it's only three inches deep. So we're going to have to make that. We can't make that pinhole stick through very far. And it looks to be from looking at the two pictures about an inch and a half in. You can see that hole right there. It looks to be about inch and a half. And then that's the depth of the uh, trailer and that's the height now I had to count the little sixteenths along this picture and it appears that this is inch and a half inside so I've got I think just the perfect piece this looks to be maybe eighth inch maybe a little bit thicker uh, this is inch and a half so that'll fit over those little ears that you saw on the trailer and then this is two inches wide so this should fit inside the receiver receptacle. So then I just have to build up a little bit along this edge. You can see how this edge right here is kind of flared out. So I'm going to start out by fixing that at least and get that flattened out. Then what we'll probably end up doing is maybe capping that. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good right there. So I've got some scrap half inch plate steel here guys and this is just a circle that I cut out from when we built the uh, it's like a 150 pound grinder stand I'll put a link to that so this is the right width to fit inside the receiver hitch piece it'll fit this way through there but height wise it's only an inch and a half so it's going to be too sloppy so what my thoughts are is I'll take a piece of this half inch plate cut it and then weld it here so now it'll measure two inches by two inches outside and it'll fit right in there but because it's inch and a half on the other end that'll make it the perfect width to fit in between these two little pieces here so just literally drill all we'll have to do for this side to fabricate is just drill a hole through it that'll work pretty good but I'm gonna cut this half inch plate with a plasma cutter so now I'm just gonna mark it out now, typically these types of tools, these speed squares, are reserved for you know carpentry, but they work great for this. Uh, it just frees up your hands and gives you a nice straight line. You can see I got a two-inch mark right there. I know that that's how wide we need to make it, so I'm going to put a little two-inch scratch mark there. You can see right here, there's the two-inch mark, and I've just slid this over and traced along the side, and that's the line I will follow with the plasma cutter. So to make this cut, I'm using my Yes Welder. It's a Cut 55 DS, so it's a 55 amp plasma cutter. A plasma cutter simply runs on electricity and air. That's all it needs to cut. And that's what's so nice about this. You don't have to buy oxygen tanks. You don't have to have acetylene tanks. It's pretty straightforward operation. There are very few pieces that need to be replaced, and those are what's called consumable. And that's these pieces right here. You have just a little ceramic piece, you have a nozzle, and then inside here you have a little electrode piece. And those are relatively cheap. Depending on how dry your shop air is, these can last a real long time. And if you have real wet air, then they don't last very long at all. I don't even have an air dryer on mine, and my consumables last for a pretty long time. So as I said, and I've, I've talked in other videos, that this is a dual voltage machine. Right now, I have it plugged into 220 volt power, so it will max out at its full potential of 55 amps. If you only, you know, if you do away with this little adapter piece that comes with it, and you just plug this into your regular wall receptacle, like here in the USA, 110 power, that only limits this, I think, for around 30 amps. All you're gonna do is set your amperage and your air pressure. And a lot of people just set it for, you know, 60 PSI of air and just max the machine out and call it good. And yes, that does work, but what that does do is it burns up your consumables. So the way I look at this, I look at it like an oxygen and an acetylene tank. You know, if you were using 
oxygen and acetylene, you would not just, you know, if you were cutting a thin eighth inch piece of metal, you wouldn't turn it up and make the flame, this massive flame, just so you could make that cut. You would, you would optimize that flame so you didn't waste your gas and you'd make your flame just big enough to make your cut. Well, that's what you do when you set your air and amperage with a plasma cutter. It, all it does is it prolongs your consumables. And I would recommend anybody with any plasma cutter that you, that you do this, that you use a chart similar to this so that you can optimize your machine. And I'll show you that chart. If you go over to my YouTube page, either on your phone or on a computer, sorry about the glare guys, I'm, I, I can't really help that. I have to have it bright in here to be able to film good. And click on the community tab. Okay, now the community tab is going to have all kinds of things if you're subscribed or you get the notifications, you'll get these. So like I'm announcing the winners to the boots, uh, again, listing the giveaway winners, that's last week's video, that's an, you know a, a sneak peek into what's coming up in that video. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things that you're going to get in this community tab and also on my Facebook and Instagram pages, I do the same thing there. So. Well, we look over here, here's that plasma cutter chart, and you see half inch right there. This goes all the way from 1 64th of an inch all the way down to 7 eighths thick. Well, we go over here, we look at half inch plate. We're going to be 50 amps right there and 50 PSI for half inch. So 50 and 50. That will optimize our plasma cutter for that thickness of metal. So now it's all plugged in. We turn it on. We're going to turn it up to 50, our chart said. So there's 50. I mean, you don't have to get, get it absolutely perfect 50, but for you that guys that are a little OCD like me, you probably have to have it at 50. And you can see we're about 42. So we got to go up a little bit further right to about there. And the way we adjust our air guys is we lift up on this knob and to increase the air pressure, we turn it clockwise. And we said we needed to be at 50. And it is 50. Now our machine is optimized. Now we just got to get our PPE gear on and get set up. And I want to mention that this machine is what's considered a pilot arc. Now what a pilot arc is, is that there's one other component I didn't talk to you about is I've just ground a bare area right here and you just ground it. You just put your ground clamp on that, that completes the circuit of this. Remember I said it runs on just electricity and air? So that completes our circuit. Well what a pilot arc is, is that that means I can pull the trigger and the cutting action actually works without making contact with this. Now, some machines, you actually have to grind the metal back so that the, this tip can make contact with the metal in order to initiate that arc. This you don't have to, and a pilot arc is nice because let's say, you know, I've got real scaly rust like this has. I don't have to like create a nice clean contact for this arc to initiate. I literally can just pull the trigger on this and it'll initiate the arc. That works good for rust, it works good for paint. Uh, you literally just pull the trigger, it does its thing and you just cut along the way. And this also can be used with a CNC machine. So if you had like a plasma cut table, you can also use this machine for that. This is kind of like rated for, uh, I wouldn't say heavy industrial, but this would be like hardcore uh, homeowner type stuff, maybe light general fabrication with a CNC table. You could use this machine for. So this is just a real good machine for that. So let's talk about our PPE gear real quick. This is what I wear for welding and for cutting. If you go on to 3M's website, the 2091 are rated for cutting, welding, torching, fumes, uh, metal fabrication. The 2097s are actually maybe one step higher because those, I believe the 2097s have a charcoal element inside of them as well. Those are also rated for welding, cutting, grinding, um, you know, cutting fumes, metal fabrication. So these are the two styles that you want. This type fits under your hood. 
2091 cartridges or 2097 are the ones that are recommended by 3M for welding and metal fabrication and welding fumes. And you don't want to be breathing in this stuff as you're cutting it. So I always wear a respirator when I'm doing, you know, cutting operations like this. And it's actually a good idea when you're welding to wear one of these as well and have good ventilation. I'll put a link to this down in the description. These were like uh, 10 bucks years ago. Um, not too long ago before uh, the pandemic, but uh, they're a little bit more now. But I think prices are starting to just starting to stabilize out as far as you know the PPE gear, and you can st you can get this stuff now. I'm gonna have this overhang my table, so I'm gonna clamp it down using one of my fixture clamps that we made not too long ago. What I've done here, guys, is I just clamped down a little piece of scrap metal alongside the edge of my line. That way I have something to follow with my plasma cutter torch so that I can get a nice straight cut. Let me show you what I mean. That plasma cutter cuts out the center of that. You see how there's that little hole in the center? So all I gotta do is bump the edge of my torch up against my straight edge and that will allow me to have a nice straight cut all along that. So. That way I don't have like waviness because the slightest little bit of waviness in your wrist will show up in the cut. So this will allow me to get a nice straight cut, hopefully. Our ground's all on, our piece is all nice and clamped to the table. We've got our straight edge, time to get this done. And what you have left over after the cut is called dross or slag or whatever you want to call it. But, and that easily just comes off with like a chipping hammer. Now all we got to do is just cut this to length. It looks like it's about three inches deep. So we'll make that three inches long and then we can weld it to the top of that one and a half by two inch piece. And that'll make, then that'll make that two inches by two inches where it slides in. And then it will be inch and a half by two inches where the trailer actually has to connect. And again, I'm just gonna be using my speed square, mark out three inches, which is right there. And scribe a line. Now I'm just gonna be cutting this with my portable bandsaw that I built. Now I'm just going to clean everything up with a wire wheel. I've already brought this to the grinder and cleaned that up as well. Then we'll weld that to that. Do a nice job there and then grind the sides all flush so it looks nice. Cap the back, cap the front, drill a couple holes in it, good to go. You can see our material is eighth inch thick or 125 thousandths. So now we just gotta set our welder up to correspond to that. We'll start by turning on our gas bottle, standing off to the side. Open that up nice and slow. And open it all the way, because that's how these bottles seal. Now I've been running 16 CFH lately and that is going to save you a pile of gas and you're still going to get about the same coverage. So that's been working really good for me. Again, I turn off uh, all my fans when I'm in the workshop for a couple reasons. One, if I have all my fans running in my uh, fume hood, then you guys can't hear me work. Uh, you just, it drowns it out. So I just keep them off and then in between uh, shots, I turn the fans back on to air, to air out the workshop. But, so this machine is set up and ready to weld. So let's get going. Another thing to consider guys, that MIG or even self-shielded flux core, they're all very sensitive to where you have your ground or your earth. So if you can, it's best to always have your earth or your ground close to where you're welding. Uh, so in this case, I have it you know, grounded directly to the part and that actually is the best way to do it. So my thought process here is we're gonna fill up right in here then we're gonna cap it. Hopefully I can cap it high enough that I'm above this 
and then we can grind these sides down all flush. So on the side, it looks like it's just going to make a step, like this was all molded or milled out this way. And we'll do the same thing on the other end. Then we'll have to make a cap for the back just to keep garbage from getting in there and mud and dirt. All right, guys, we're doing a giveaway, and here it is. I'll have the rules in the community section of YouTube of what the rules to this contest are, but I can give you briefly what they're going to be. I'm giving away this welding helmet. This is the actual helmet I'm giving away. Look at the uh, field of view with this. This thing is incredible. I love it. Look at this uh, nice cushiony. It's like an air cushion. It's got adjustable ratchet straps inside. It's got sensitivity, delay. It's got grind mode inside. This is like the uh, clear view ones with the open to the sides. So you get a full view. This helmet is awesome. And I am going to ship this to one lucky winner. Look at that headgear, I like that, These uh, the quick ratchet headgear. So I'll have the rules in the deadline in the community section on YouTube. I'm not sure when this is gonna end quite yet, but it'll be within the rules. But what you need to do, if you wanna be entered in this video, you do have to be subscribed to the channel, and you gotta have your notifications turned on. Because if you're not a subscriber to the channel, and you don't have the notifications turned on, you're not gonna know if you're a winner. And I think that that's some of the issues that I've just gone through with a recent giveaway is that they didn't have them on. So I want everyone to be part of this. I'm not advertising this as a giveaway because the problem is is that if I just started a video that said give away a welding helmet, I'd have all kinds of people tune into the video and sign up for this giveaway that may never come back to the channel again. So I want to give away something that the, the loyal viewers that normally watch this channel, uh, I want to give it to them. I want those guys to be part of this. The ones that tune in every week that just watch because they enjoy the content, not because they saw a caption at the top giveaway. This is going to be for you guys, the guys that watch this channel all the time. What I want you to do is comment the state that you're from at some point in time I'm gonna pick a lucky winner and I'm gonna send this to you this is this is the helmet that you're gonna get and I will uh, put my name inside of it I'll actually sign the inside of the welding helmet here okay so make sure you subscribe make sure that you've got the bell notifications on and put a little comment down in this video something that's gonna make your comments stand out to the others, okay? Because I'm gonna read them all. As you guys know, the loyal viewers that watch, I try to answer everyone's question and I try to make a comment to everyone. If you leave a comment, I reply. So let's get back to it, guys. I'm gonna try out, I got another one right beside me. I'm gonna try it out for the first time. We'll see how it looks. So let's get going. And there you go. I just signed it, guys. So one lucky winner is gonna get this and I'm super excited. I love doing these giveaways, so. Well, so far, guys, this thing is like, incredibly cool so when you look through it you're looking it's almost like looking through just like with your regular eyes it's that clear plus you have it's open on the side so you can see all the way around you it's literally like not wearing a helmet with other helmets that I have it actually when it's not engaged the filter like when you're normally looking through it it has a tint to it this really this doesn't really have a tint to it. It's just a light, light, light tint. Maybe like you're wearing a light pair of sunglasses. So it's pretty incredible looking. When you look at metal, it looks exactly like it does when you're looking at it with your bare eyes. Yeah, and that's probably the weirdest thing is that I can see out my peripheral vision. With normal helmets, you can't. So that's pretty cool. Let's see how this thing uh, welds. Yeah, that worked good. We'll just do a couple more passes all along this and build it right up and then we'll uh, grind it flush. Hey, look how built up that is along that. We'll grind that flush, I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to put a new wheel on it. This one just isn't doesn't feel like it's aggressive enough. And again guys, if you don't put the wheel on using a wrench, you won't have to take it off using a wrench. That's all I do is just tighten that down, press, depress this little button here, 
you can give it a clockwise turn and that's all that's required. There, yeah, that looks pretty good right there. That's gonna look nice. See what we got going now, guys? So this is all smooth and flat. And what I'm gonna do is you see how this has a radius corner here? I'm gonna do that same radius corner right there to match it. And then I'm gonna cap off this back. So when you look at it from the end on, the profile will look just like a regular piece of square tube, two inch. It'll have this little step right here, and then there'll be a little hole right here for that trailer. So. Yeah, this is coming out really good. Now we just got to weld along that edge there and grind it flush. Yeah, I got to turn it off. I got a, I don't know if you can see it. I got a little dot of porosity because my uh, fan is running. And it obviously blew my coverage gas away. You can see the grayish color on it. See, check that out, guys. You see how it has like a grayish hue to it? That's because my fan over there, that one right there, and it was actually blowing my coverage gas away and it actually caused some porosity. And you see how it has like a grayish tint to it? That's one of the disadvantages of using uh, shielding gas is that you got to have pretty much no wind. If you want your fans running, self-shielded flux core is perfect for that because obviously as the name implies, it's self-shielded. It doesn't require an exterior shielding gas. I'll keep the fan off this time. Now we're just gonna cap over it. There's no pressure on this. All this piece is doing is just taking up uh, filler space on the, on the inside of that hitch. Hey, a big old weave right over that jewel. You know what? That thing's not going anywhere. Now I've got both sides roughly ground and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld along here and then we'll just start capping the ends and then we'll drill our holes. thing is super hot. Uh, I did like probably five passes on that and now I'm going to put the cap on the end. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to cap inside here, weld it all the way around and then grind the backside flush. Real easy way of doing it without doing a measurement is just use a set of calipers and so we're going to go two inches wide and then it will be an inch and a half in the other direction. So we'll mark that on a piece of plate. So now I got that marked, now we just gotta do this one. Yeah. There's one side and then the other side. Cut it along that length. Piece of cake. So now there's going to be a pin that goes through this to, into the receiver. So what I've done is I just took a black uh, magic marker, colored that onto the metal, so that way when I go to scribe my exact measurement into this, I'll have a nice reference line and I'll be able to see it. So I'm going to be coming in an inch and a half from the end and centered on this. So that's two inch. You can see now how that all looks nice and smooth. It looks like all one piece. So we'll center it this way and it's coming in an inch and a half.
All right, let's get this thing done. You can see I took the chuck off. I just put an annular cutter in it. And now we'll bring our work close to the, close to it. And let's get this project done. So here it is, I got a nice coat of paint on it. You can see right, I don't know if you can see it right there is that little dot. That's where I had that little bit of uh, porosity from where we had the wind uh, in the shop or the fan going. This part will slide into the receiver and then you'll put a pin through it. And then this side is the side that has the ears uh, that you drop a pin down through there for the cart. So yeah, pretty happy, nice and slick. Not overly heavy, and uh, this should work good. So, yeah, if you want to know about any of the tools that you see me using, click on that. Go to the community tab, read the rules uh, before you sign up, and uh, I've got a link to that welding helmet. You can check that out, and you can also check out the plasma cutter. And be sure you guys leave a comment down in the comment section. Comment your stake, because I really want to give this away to uh, my loyal viewers. That welding helmet is incredible. It's called True Color. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was called when I was using it, but it's actually called True Color, and that's why it looks so vivid and crisp when you look through it. So I'm excited to give one away to one lucky one. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. And if you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, go ahead and scroll down below in the video description and look. I have a lot of links down there that's going to save you some money. Until next week guys i will see you then new videos every friday so i hope you're subscribed and you've got the notifications on because when we do giveaways i want you guys to be alerted and you guys to get the notifications on this channel i'll see you next week guys take care stay safe see ya